Hey, everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel. Talk a little baseball, Tom. What's happening, man? I'm doing good. You know, I got my uh, big season-long fantasy draft next week. We have the league starting uh, shortly thereafter. I'm excited. Well, I have two leagues to draft next week. I have no idea how it's going to go. But I do know that, well, we have a couple of pitchers that we're looking at as potential Cy Young favorites and guys that you can get at Plus Money. So let's get into it right now. We begin with the AL Cy Young contenders, and we'll start in the AL Central with the Indians' Shane Bieber. Bieber, a popular fantasy target and sleeper earlier this year, and you can get him at plus 700 to win the Cy Young. It's going to be a sprint this year, not a marathon, Tom. What do you think of the Biebs? Yeah, I guess I would say I'm a believer. We know that Garrett Cole is uh, the favorite, but at plus 700, Bieber is a really strong option, and we look back to last season, uh, you know, 30.2% strikeout rate, the 10th best in the league. He's coming with the third best odds, and overall, we're looking at a pretty easy schedule. He gets to face the Royals a lot, gets to face the Tigers. The White Sox are certainly there, and, you know, they're a dangerous team, but they're still young, relatively undisciplined, and they strike out a lot. We look at his stats overall from last year, and we're looking at the top five or top six when it comes to XFIP, Sierra, Whip, you name it. He is up there and really ready to take the throne as one of the next great aces in the MLB. So plus 700, uh, you know, somewhat of an easier schedule. I like Bieber. You're a believer. I'm a believer. I got good intentions. I love my mama. All that. Never say never. Shane Bieber at plus 700, a potential Cy Young Award winner. Let's go from a future ace to a current ace. That brings us to Blake Snell, who won the Cy Young just a couple of years ago for the Tampa Bay Rays. You get Blake Snell at plus 1,000. Remember, when the season was supposed to begin back in March, well, Snell was battling a bit of a shoulder injury, an injury he also battled last year. But if he's healthy at plus 1,000 for the guy that won the award the last time he was healthy, well, that seems like pretty good odds now. Absolutely. Great odds at plus 1,000. Like you said, last year, dealing with this shoulder injury, we actually look back to last year. He had a higher strikeout rate at 33% than he did when he won the Cy Young at 31% in 2018. Now, you know, last year he pitched fewer innings overall, so we have to take that into consideration. But this is at least a player that has shown the capability to reach that ceiling to be a Cy Young pitcher. So we're getting, hopefully, a fully healthy Snell after all this time off, hopefully not dealing with that that shoulder injury. We know he's at home most of the time, you know, half of his starts, hopefully in a great pitcher's park on the road. It's not the best Yankee stadium, Fenway Camden, and all these great hitters parks. It's also a bit of a tougher competition overall, but I'm going to bank on the plus, you know, 1000 odds for a pitcher who has done it in the past. The schedule may not be great, nor the opposing ballparks. Like you said, Fenway park, Yankee stadium, but a plus 1000 for a guy that's already done it. That's just too good to ignore. Plus 1000 for Blake's now. Why not? One more AL pitcher we want to get to, and this is a favorite of everybody. I'm surprised the number still is at plus 1,500, and that's Lucas Giolito, who burst onto the scene last year, a former top prospect for the Nationals. And when he made his debut with the White Sox uh, a couple of years back, it looked like he had bust written all over him. Then he figured it out. as one of the best pitchers in baseball for the last four months of the year. He doesn't need a good four months this year. He needs a good two. And at plus 1,500, you have to like Lucas Giolito. Absolutely. Like you said, after the trade, uh, you know, going from the Nationals to the White Sox in 2018, you see a 16% strikeout rate, nothing to get excited about. Uh, then last year, he jumps up to a 32% strikeout rate, which is amazing. And as you said at the beginning, this is a sprint, not a marathon. And we saw Giolito go through these stretches where in his first 10 games last season, he gave up 19 earned runs total. And then in his next 10 starts, gave up 27 earned runs and then finished the season strong. So a young pitcher who doesn't have this consistency and he's going through these spurts of just greatness and then looking kind of average and then back to greatness, I'm banking on the plus one, uh, plus 1,500 odds for Giolito. If he could just put together one of these strong stretches and 10 starts, he could be the favorite. I think you have to bank on that plus 1,500. Lucas Giolito was arguably the best pitcher in baseball at times last year. That strikeout rate doubled, as Tom just mentioned. Giolito has all the makings of a future ace, a current ace, and potentially a future Cy Young Award winner. And at plus 1,500, well, it makes a lot of sense to put something down. Let's head on over to the National League, and you get arguably the best pitcher in baseball in Walker Bueller at plus 750. Now, some of the negatives of Bueller. They say he's not exactly ready to go five or six innings to start off the year. That means those last eight starts better be pretty damn good. But the 
hot, the top side of that is they can be because Walker Buehler may be the best pitcher in baseball. You're getting him at plus 750. Yeah, for my money, I would say that Walker Buehler is going to be like the next great ace in the MLB. And I wish there was a way to like bet on his total career, Cy Young's, like, you know, at the end of his career, how many over under, you know, Cy Young's, if I could bet on that, I would take the over. Like he is that next great ace, in my opinion. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, like you said, in the beginning, we're not sure how long he can go, but we saw the upside from him last season. I remember those games against Colorado, San Diego, going in a full nine innings, striking out 15, 16 hitters in those games. And overall, he was super, super consistent. Over his 30 starts last season, 22 of them gave up three earned runs or fewer. So we just need him to get deeper into the games, and we know he's going to lock it down. Plus 750 right now, the third best or the third best favorite to win the Cy Young in the NL. Really like him at this price. I think the price is awesome. I, I just worry about his length. I worry about his ability to uh, go deep into games and how stretched out he is. It's going to be a tough season for everybody. Walker Buehler certainly has the stuff to do it. And I, I agree. Whatever that career number Cy Young Award is, I'm going over. Just don't know about this year here in 2020. Aaron Nola last year came into the season as an ace, both in fantasy baseball and, of course, for the Philadelphia Phillies. Things didn't exactly go according to plan. And because of that, you're getting him to win the Cy Young at plus 1,800 at the FanDuel Sportsbook. For Aaron Nola, a bit of redemption and, again, a sprint. You need 10 good starts. A plus 1,800 from a guy that was in the East last year, you could get it, Tom. Absolutely. Like you said, uh, he needs that redemption because two years ago in 2018, he was actually third in the Cy Young voting behind DeGrom and Scherzer up there with the best pitchers in the league. And he had these, uh, I want to say, kind of similar to Gilito, where he's hot and cold, hot and cold. The first five starts, he had four losses. Then he wins six straight. And then he has seven wins in eight starts. And then he finishes the season with seven straight losses. So he's up, down, up, down, all over the place. And really, if we look at the Phillies lineup behind him, they got a little bit better, adding Didi Gregorius to get Andrew McCutcheon back healthy, looking pretty solid overall. So a pitcher that clearly regressed last year, giving up 1.20 home runs per nine, you know, that are up from the 0. .7 he gave up in 2018. We're getting a legitimate ace who's coming off a bad year at plus 1,800. So Aaron Nola in a bounce back year, give me one of these stretches where he goes seven wins and eight starts when he's probably only, only going to get 11 or 12. I'll take him at that price. Wins are a finicky stat, as we saw last year, like you said. A bunch of wins in a row, a bunch of losses in a row. and It was a down year by any metric, really, for Aaron Nola. But if you put on one of these hot streaks, for a guy that certainly has the talent and potential, you're getting a really good number at plus 1,800. Now you want to talk about inconsistency. You want to talk about a guy that can win 10 in a row, lose 10 in a row, walk six guys in a row, but then strike out another seven in a row. That's Robbie Ray. And we have seen as fantasy owners over the last five years, both the good and the bad with Robbie Ray. But if he can get onto a streak, hey, why not? And this number, according to the FanDuel Sportsbook, Plus 4,000 for Robbie Ray. He's a long shot worth taking, according to Utah. Yeah, so Robbie Ray has got to be, like, my hot take for this. Uh, and, you know, I had him on my fantasy team last year. I played him in DFS a ton. We know the upside that he brings, a 31.5% strikeout rate, which is actually the sixth best in the league. And he's coming in with the 18th best odds to win it at plus 4,000. So clearly there's a difference between what he's capable of and what people project him to be. And looking at his, you know, plus 4,000 odds, looking at, you know, at the players around him, Brandon, Wood, uh, Brandon Woodruff at plus 4,000, Zach Allen at plus 5,000. Like, these aren't pitchers that you could say, okay, I trust them to win a game. Now, where he gets hurt is, of course, the walks and the home runs. But we know that Chase Field with the humidor that they put in two years ago, it's actually regressing to being more of a pitcher's park. He's going to pitch some of his games in San Francisco, which is a great pitcher's park, a very weak lineup. Dodgers have an okay park, a tough lineup against the Padres, you know, a good park and a tougher lineup against the you know, Rockies isn't great. But a player that who pitched uh, 12 of his 33 starts with nine strikeouts or more, getting on one of these hot streaks at plus 4,000, given the options around him, he's probably the best candidate to actually get it done. So there's plenty of risk here with the walks and the home runs, but the sixth best strikeout, league, uh, strikeout rate in the league, you got to have some interest in that. I don't know, man. You're a fantasy owner just like I am that has own Robbie Ray that has dealt with all of those walks and the crippling whip that comes with it. Plus 4,000, it's, I get it, right? Like, it is a long shot bet. It's a hot take. Zach Gallon, Brandon Woodruff around here too. And maybe, maybe those guys are better options to win a game. But, you know, you want to strike out, it's Robbie Ray. To win the Cy Young, 
<laughs> I don't know. But hey, a plus 4,000. Why not? That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Tom, I appreciate the time. Keep the hot takes coming. Hey, we'll be back next week for uh, some more MLB hot takes. Not only do we have MLB hot takes next week, we also have MLB games next week as well. It should be fun. For Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the weekend and stay safe, everybody.